it's just an insane model. Before social media, if I pitch this to a client <laughs> to say, yeah. you know what I mean? We're going to build a community for you, but you don't own it. And you're not going to have any, you're going to have to pay to access it after you paid me to build it. I mean, they would tell me to go, you know, long Jump walk on a short pier. Or whatever, yeah. I mean, so it just makes no sense. Welcome back to another episode of Marketing on Tap. Uh, as always, my name is Sam Fiorella. This is Danny Brown. Morning. Danny, today uh, I want to talk about Facebook. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> Facebook, everybody's favorite topic. Uh, it's actually not about Facebook, but Facebook has had a bit of a rocky time. We know that and we don't want to necessarily relitigate, you know, Analytica or, you know, politics. But there's a lot of brands that are now standing up and saying no more to Facebook. Uh, earlier this year, the uh, Lush, uh, the uh, cosmetics giant, um, decided to pull all of its advertising dollars from social communities such as Facebook and Instagram, choosing to invest in its own media. Uh, also in the UK, Weatherspoons, one of you know my favorite places, uh, pubs to hate, uh, decided to shut down all of its social media communications, uh, citing online trolling as one of the reasons that they just said no. You can engage us on our app. You can engage us on our website. You can engage. We're going to talk to you through our magazine as always, but we're pulling everything in. And more famously right now, the, the uh, uh, CrossFit this week stormed <laughs> off Facebook and Instagram stating that the social network, and I have to read this, is complicit in the global chronic disease crisis. More specifically, it claimed that Facebook's news feeds are censored and crafted to reflect the political leanings of Facebook's utopian socialists. Wow. I'd like to know how many PR specialists they had to put to get to put that statement out. But anyway, CrossFit is the one that actually really got me thinking simply because, <laughs> well, we have a uh, uh, they've got a huge following and this could actually mean something for Facebook. And there's, so the, basically there's a trend happening here that I think we need to discuss. So that's today's topic. Uh, do brands, um, fight conventional wisdom that these platforms are vital component of, of, of a marketing mix, or can they successfully get off them and, and still be successful uh, in the marketing world? That's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, but okay. in the meantime, we are pouring a guest beer today. Yeah. So one of your friends brought us back from, yeah. um, uh, where was it? Chris, Chris Hawkins brought it back from, um, uh, Nova Scotia. So okay. th this is a Nova That's Scotia beer. A far, far, far away Thank beer. You. Okay. So this is Annapolis Brewing Company. Like you said, Annapolis. Annapolis. You Annapolis. Scott. Hmm. You know, he brought it because he knew he knows I like dark beer, but I think he forgot that I hate IPAs. But I have to admit, this is uh, the, the the bitterness actually only comes out at the end. Right. Uh, so when you're first tasting, oh, that's a, oh, not the bitterness. Uh, so the more it comes out, yeah, I'm not good. I'm not that big of a fan. It's not going to stop me from drinking it, but I'm not that big of a fan. All right, so let's get back to uh, the topic. I want to start with Lush. So Lush decided, um, and they, I think they did it in a really good way. Uh, they decided that they're going to stop being on social media by posting on social media, but with a really good message. They said, well, a good graphic. I'm sure Anna will put in here in the video. We're switching up social. Right. So instead of we're switching off, we're switching it up. And what they're basically saying is that owned media doesn't have to be on social platforms. Owned media could be on their own platform. So they're taking mm -hmm. everything back. And they're developing communities, but on their own site. Yeah. And it's a huge, huge risk. And the big problem for them, and this is what I want to talk about, Danny, is that their analytics, their social analytics showed that Facebook only serves up their content to 6% of their entire audience that they've spent all of this time and money to accumulate. Yeah. So this has been my biggest problem with Facebook communities, which is why we started Bondi. And one of the mm -hmm. reasons why our, you know, in our platform that we build for clients, we do this is that you spend all of this money with Facebook and, and your time to build up an audience to get fans. And then you got to pay them to advertise to those people that you paid to build and get on as a fan. Yeah. So it's just a racket. And these guys said, hold on, this is just silly. Uh, we're not going to do it anymore. So. 
they decided to only pull for the time being their UK brand off. The US brand is and North America brand is still online. But they're, I mean, I think this is a really interesting case study for us to follow. So is Facebook or any other social media platforms, is that community mandatory for brands? Or can a company like this actually do better by pulling off of those social networks and building their own on-site communities? Yeah, well, first I'm impressed that they even got six percent. Yeah, you know, reach with a it's organic. It's four normally, is it four? isn't it? Well, even less. I mean, some brands are only saying about two, two, two and a really? half percent reach. So the organic reach is pretty crap on Facebook. Um, and and with their latest changes, where they're putting it back to stories and private, you know, communities, etc., it's even worse now. It's going to get worse. Yeah. For these brands, so I and you mentioned before, we do that with our own clients. We've mm-hmm. got clients that we've pulled onto their own communities, and the engagement there is just through the roof. You know, it's excellent. We have a mobile app, and engagement there is excellent um, for one of our clients. So it shows that when you you do actually own the the community and own the content and the audience to a degree. You're not going to lose engagement. Now, obviously, Facebook has got a wider reach right. globally, but who cares? If you're in the UK, you want UK customers. If you're in North America, you want North American customers. If you're in South Africa, yeah. you want South African customers. So it's coming back to niche. And, you know, I applaud the way, as you mentioned, Lush did it. I don't think it will harm them um, as much as Facebook might like us to think it does. Um, all right. So our time is running out. So let's talk about CrossFit because that's the big one right now. CrossFit is like Mac. It's a cult. Um, And here they have hundreds of thousands of followers around the world. CrossFit isn't isn't a product like Lush's, you know, or like Witherspoon's, Mm. you know, bar is. They are a culture. Yeah. Anyway, they decided to go off because a Facebook community was shut down by Facebook. Now, this wasn't their community. It was an independent third party community that was made up of CrossFitters talking about, you know, low carb diets and everything CrossFit, basically Mm -hmm. everything that supports CrossFit. Facebook shut it down with no reason. uh, And then for whatever reason, put it back up again. And, you know, CrossFit lost it. It's a single, single owner. This is not like a, a, you know, a group of people. It's not a publicly traded company. And he has a history of going up against big brands. He's been in a fight with Coca-Cola for the longest time. Yeah. And so he said, well, hold on. And, you know, this is where he came out with those outlandish, you know, statements about, you know, them being, you know, the, the devil incarnate. But he basically said, why would I support a community that's actually negative, not only to our physical and mental health, and we're all about health, yep. participating on social media is actually negative. So why am I supporting this with our communities, number one? And number two, you have this arbitrary right to cancel communities because it doesn't fit your worldview yeah. or because of the content within it might not support your worldview. So I'm not going to support this. And I'm pulling off. And guess what? I'm going to encourage all of my followers yep. to get off. And I think this is the... the, the That's the big one, I think. Yeah. Just the fact this is the first time that a multinational corporation with the type of following rabid fan base that these guys have is now pulling off and telling their followers, come join us elsewhere, get off of these social networks. This is where I think he might actually be starting something. Yeah. What is our final parting thought for those listening so diligently? Like you say, marketers do have to watch the next six to 12 months and see what other brands may be doing or thinking of doing or talking about doing uh, and start planning for, we know that Facebook is going into private communities. They're all yeah. about encrypted messaging. And we spoke about that in a previous podcast. Then, dark social. The dark social podcast about, you know, planning for the encrypted uh, communities. This is another wake up call that maybe Facebook is not where you need to be plowing your money into. Plow it into an app. Yeah. Build a community, build that value and start owning, really owning your community again. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think this is a sign of things to come. And, you know, I highly recommend those of you that haven't listened to our um, dark social podcast to go back a and few we'll weeks. link it up here if you're yeah. watching on YouTube and, uh, and, and check that out everything that's happening here this whole trajectory of where social is going between the statistics that are showing um, the negative mental health effects and everybody taking digital vacations and time away like the end consumer taking time off of uh, social media and now brands saying this is not good for our business it's not good for you we need to get out 
you really do need to be paying attention to where else can I build these communities? Because if nothing else, social media proved that online communities is a fantastic tool to develop influencers and add to find influencers, Mm -hmm. develop advocates um, and uh, develop a loyalty to your brand that you may not have been able to have before. So what is it that you're going to do? Where are you going to build that community? What tool are you going to use to build that community? Um, you know, I mean, if you're a large company, it's a little plug for our company. You might want to check out Bondi.co. Um, but if it's not that, what is it? If it's an app and you're going to do everything on side of an app, just make sure I want to reiterate an earlier comment as my final message. It has to be more than what you're doing on social media. Provide value added entertainment, value added information that's evergreen content and that allows people to come together for a reason other than transacting with your business. Uh, so that's my final thought. If you've got any other questions, comments, please feel free to message us. Leave it in the comments wherever you happen to be. Uh, if you're watching this video, leave it on YouTube. Otherwise, uh, reach out to us uh, on one of our social accounts. Or if you're not on social media, uh, get us the old-fashioned way. Look us up and give us a call. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the little like button and subscribe for future updates. It's going to be there. And subscribe's down there. I know that. And it likes up there. So that's all good. Uh, if you're on podcast, check out the show notes. I'll make sure to drop all the notes and the links in that we've been talking about today. And, you know, recommend to your friends and leave us a, a review on iTunes. That's always welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Anna. Care, Cheers, guys. everyone. Cheers. Till next time.